All I had was $5 to my name. How far can a $5 bill take you? With six children to feed and a broken marriage and absolutely no baking skills, Mignon Francois transforms her $5 bill into a $10 million cupcake empire. And I've been flipping that same money for the last 17 years into the tune of over $10 million in cupcakes. It was a game changer. No way. I have one secret ingredient that helped me to get from where I was to where I wanted to be. Today's episode unravels her extraordinary journey on how she started her business and how you can start your business today with no money. Well, we are here in Nashville, Tennessee with a local hero, Mignon Francois, and she has started her cupcake collection. So I have a ton of questions and I want to ask you. So let's start with the first one. How and when did you start your business? Yeah, I started my business in 2008 in the midst of an economic downturn. We were losing everything we had. I was living here without electricity many days because I couldn't afford it. Mm. And walking to the Kroger on the corner to buy wow. bottled water to fill the tubs to bathe my children. I was tired of being sick and tired. And I had heard the man on the radio say that you could get out of debt by having a bake sale or a garage sale. Problem with the garage sale was I sold everything I had to get to Nashville. Yeah. Problem with the bake sale, mm. I didn't know how to bake, not even out of a box. Wow. <laughs> so you literally took that idea and put it into, into practice. So how did you get the idea of the you know, the cupcake collection. Yeah, so I was practicing making cake because I believed that I could use that in order to get my family out of debt. And I was seeing people call into the radio station screaming, we're debt free, oh, and I wanted no what I felt them have. So I started practicing my craft. And I learned uh, as I would go to the neighbors and bring them cupcakes, they would come back yeah. and ask me for more. It was when my neighbor who lived in the big red house across the street mm -hmm. knocked on my door and asked me to make cupcakes for all of her clients for the season. Wow. And that was gonna be 600 cupcakes, but all I had was $5. Mm -hmm to my name. I was in the back of the house doing this stuffing of cash into envelopes following the baby steps plan that I had learned on the radio yeah. when she knocked. And so she asked me to do this huge thing of making cupcakes for everyone because they were loving what I was creating. I had this sort of perplexed look on my face and she could tell that this thing that she was so excited about, I wasn't really excited about. Not because I didn't want to do it, but I knew I really didn't have money to go and buy ingredients. Yeah. So she says to me, as you make them, I will pay you. And I walked to the Kroger around the corner and I bought all the ingredients I could buy with that $5 and I turned it into 60 that very day. Wow. And I flipped that 60 into 600 by the end of the week and I've been flipping that same money for the last 17 years into the tune of over $10 million in cupcakes. Over five million cupcakes have been sold and counting, and we've done that with no debt, no experience, no knowledge of the business, no loans, because I believe that all you have is all you need to get you from where you are to where you want to be. Oh, I love it. What a beautiful story. And I think you're talking about the same guy that has helped us, uh, Dave Ramsey, yeah. <laughs> who has taught us how to live on a budget, and like you say, below your means, yeah. you know, and get to the next step and just keep going at it. That mm -hmm. is so wonderful. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Thank you. Come on in, let's All take right. a look. Let's go, I'm excited. How many cupcakes do you guys produce in a day? Oh my gosh, so it ranges from day to day, but uh -huh. let me show you. Okay. I think sometimes it's easier to see because this rack has become empty now. Okay. But you guys got here at about seven and yeah. now it's eight. 57 yeah. and they've already decorated this wow. and if you see that they're uh, they're working on these right here okay and then they've already got in this case wow i mean it, it cool. looks like there's 400 but i don't know <laughs> how many there are thousands of cupcakes so each one of these racks represents 24 cupcakes wow. so this right here is 100 cupcakes here wow. this is going to be full and then this 
Each one of these racks are full all the way to the back. They also prepare cupcakes for shipping. These are just what's been ordered yeah. and what's gonna be available for walk-in. Wow. So that's not even everything. That is so cool. <laughs> so Mignon, you started on a ridiculous low startup cost of $5. I mean, that's unheard of. So I just wanna know, what did you do? How'd you start that? And how did you get from there to where you're at now? Yeah, I have one secret ingredient that helped me to get from where I was to where I wanted to be. You guys, you just heard that. She has one secret, so stay tuned to find out how she got from $5 to where she's at now. What are one of the greatest challenges that you've had starting from scratch, and how'd you overcome that? I think one of my challenges was also one of my greatest assets, and that was being in this neighborhood. Mm. People thought that I was crazy for opening up a yeah. bakery here, and the neighbors thought, poor girl, she, she doesn't even know <laughs> that she's doomed to fail already. Uh -huh. But it was the community of the mm. neighborhood that caused other people to want to spread it out so that other people could experience it. I think one of the challenges was also that this was the inner city. There were just a lot of warehouses and this was industrial yeah, yeah. and commercial, yeah. very little residential. And what was residential was becoming affluent uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, right before our eyes. And yeah, we yeah. weren't in that class of people. Yeah. And so just feeling like we didn't belong here, yet this was the place we had made our home, offered its own challenges. Okay. The cupcake truck is a reinvention of your cupcake bus. And from what I heard is this, this was the first Nashville had to offer, is that true? Yes, it was a game changer. No way. <laughs> you guys stay tuned because we're about to unpack what is this bus and how did that change her business moving forward? Okay, I've never driven this before, oh, Nick, no. so you better put your seatbelt on. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> So what are your main marketing strategies that you implement in your business today? Or how do your customers find more information about you guys? Yeah, I believe the same things that we were doing in the past are the things that we're doing in the present and for our future. Because I believe that your past should inform your future. Yeah. And so word of mouth is still the thing that we're using today. When people come in and they tell us what they want or need, we're listening to our customers. But now that we have more money to work with yeah. we're doing billboard advertising we have digital marketing we do text message marketing so I love watching you know text messages go out and say the cupcake collection has a new flavor oh, and nice. then people can come in and those people who are subscribing to our email marketing okay. are the first to find out about offers and opportunities that we have on the table awesome. so Besides being able to know when we're doing a deal on shipping our cupcakes nationwide, uh -huh. I love being able to say for people, hey, do you have the inside scoop? Are you joy riding with me? Because I believe that joy is the secret ingredient in our product. Yeah. So we're pulling up on the front of the cupcake collection. I guess another thing that we do to market our business is sometimes drive this cupcake bus around because, oh, it's a cupcake truck now. Yeah. I still call it cupcake bus. Yeah. But just to drive it around so that people can see that she's back. Yeah. We call her Joy. So her name is Joy. Uh, <laughs> that's great. All right, so these are just questions from the uh, viewers and they're going to go quick and fast. Are you ready for this? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, so Laporta D asked, why cupcakes over donuts or some other food? Cake is my love language and I believe that cake takes you back to a place where you've been seen. Yeah. And so I could eat cake every single day and I just wanted to be the best at that. Awesome, love it. Next question is by Emma asks, how did you build a loyal client base in a oversaturated market? I believe by being the best version of myself that I could be. The flavor in this cake reminds you so much of my hometown in New Orleans. And so I believe that that's the, the separator for us. Excellent. Cardona's Boxing asked, can you do this business from home or does it have to be in an actual building that you have to lease to start off? Yeah, this is my home. That's I right. didn't want to do the business from my home. I was looking for a place that I could lease, but I didn't have the money that it would require to have a commercial lease at the time. So using my home was the best place to start. And then my home sort of dwindled as the business began to take over. So we had to move out to give the cupcakes more space. There you go. Okay, last question by AB asked, um, do you have any HR tool recommendations? 
friends? Because we know you have family and friends working for you. What do you recommend? Yeah, I made a list of the 100 tasks I did not want to do, and I hired people who mm. was good, who were good at doing those things. So I outsourced everything. Awesome. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> This is a beautiful place out here in Tennessee. I love it. I love living right across from all of this. Yeah. So tell me, I see your team. It is an A team. I mean, everyone knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're coming in, they're smiling, they're joyfully happy. I want to ask you, like, how do you manage your team? Like, what systems in place do you have to help your workflow? Yeah. So the way that I manage my team is I listen to them. Huh. They Just tell like your me, customers. Yeah, th they tell me what it is that they need from me. It is them that help me to keep everything in line. Management shouldn't flow from the top down, but from the bottom up. Mm. So we use sort of an upside down pyramid approach yeah. in that the people who are cashiering are just as important as the people who are executives on the team. So mostly I'm listening to where they're leading. I don't want to be the smartest person in the room. If I'm the smartest person in the room, then I need to get into another room. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's an upside down approach. Mm -hmm. I think it's more of the humility approach, mm -hmm. you know, and I think it's there's a lot of wisdom there, too, because I think when leaders, they get to a position of leadership, they feel like they have the authority to do whatever mm -hmm. they want. But you're the opposite. You're like, no, what do you guys think is going to work? Because they're the ones doing all the work and they're seeing everything, right? Yeah. So they're bringing that information back to me. And the more that I can honor their their work, their gift, their voice, yeah. the more they want to bring that information back. And it's just like with customers. We were listening to customers and I'm listening to staff and these are all the things I believe are making me successful. Yeah. So you mentioned that you are from New Orleans and having a successful operation here, you decided to go to New Orleans. You're back to your hometown and start that. So that is crazy because out there, everything is good and everyone knows how to cook. <laughs> so what were the challenges there that you experienced? Yeah, I believed that I could take my success with me. Okay. But what I learned in the process is you don't get to take your success with you. What? I thought that everybody was gonna know us in New Orleans yeah. just because they knew us in Nashville and that wasn't true. Okay. So it took the same two years to open New Orleans that it took me to open Nashville. Wow, and okay. it was the same $5 and $7 days that I was having in Nashville that I was having in New Orleans, even though we were already successful here. Wow. So they were having to learn to build a business that already had a popularity in another town and yeah. a following in another town. So that can be crushing for people who think they're doing something wrong yeah. when it doesn't just open up and blow up the way you thought that it was going to be. Yeah. But the reason why we brought it to New Orleans was we believed if we could make it there with cupcakes, we could make it anywhere. Wow. It was just up to us. And so it just took us more time to learn the pieces that we needed to know. And that was in that every situation that we go into, mm -hmm. we can't go in there with arrogance, believing that just because we are who we are, that everybody is gonna flock. We still had to put in the work and that's what we learned in going to wow. New Orleans. So what are the best ways that you can market your business to your customers with no money? <laughs> Do you have any strategies on how to help and how to connect those customers? Oh yeah, I think that word of mouth is worth its weight in gold. Mm. My only marketing or market research that I did yeah. was those large eight foot windows. <laughs> I was looking That's out it. of them, looking for people who were passing by. So you're just like, hey, come on I, in? No, I, I didn't even have the store open yet. I would walk out there and say, hey, I'm trying to build this business. No way. My family says that what I'm making is good, would you taste? It, wow. I would walk up to complete strangers. And so I think it took a bit of confidence in myself to Absolutely. walk up to people who I didn't know well, good for and you. ask them to taste something that I was making. So apart from running this business, you have also written a memoir. So we have viewers that are curious, so what did you write in there and how did that help you as you know to grow? I was a trained journalist first. Mm. I believe that every stupid thing you've ever had to do is taking you from where you are to where you want to be. And I didn't know that I was going to end up in a bakery business because I promised God if he would make me successful, I would tell anybody who would listen about what they could do if they only believe. Mm. So this book is all about 
all you have is all you need to get you from where you are to where you want to be. And when we opened this store 15 years ago, it was two years that I was working every day before that door ever even opened for business. And at that time, every single thing that we had was within these four walls, the ovens, the mixers, the cash register, the case, everything was housed inside of here. But I opened it with a dorm size refrigerator and a KitchenAid mixer. Wow. And when you see what it's turned into with no debt, and from a girl who didn't know how to bake, I hope wow. that encourages somebody to know that they can do it too. Yeah. All right, so tell us your profit margins for your cupcake business. Mm -hmm. That's a really difficult question for me to be, be able to answer because my team is very involved in how we price our product. Mm. So they are rewarded for ways in which they save money okay. by sharing in the profits. So not I'm not just taking everything home for myself. Uh -huh. I'm making sure that they get a benefit out of what it is they're saving for the company. So if our profit margin is about 40 to 50 percent on a thing, then they're going to always be looking for other ways in which they can save the company money mm. in order for us to all win. Because it's important to me that they they treat me like a client, not yeah. a boss. Oh, and when you that. give people that ownership, they will own taking care of your business, not just making sure that they get a paycheck. I love that. You guys remember <laughs> that. An employee that feels appreciated will always do more than expected. You said you are you love to cheer, cheerlead people on, you know, mm -hmm. others, your teammates. I can see that because they're thriving, they're all happy and joyful. Mm -hmm. But you have your moments, I'm, I'm pretty certain. And so how do you find the encouragement when you are down, you know, and for other entrepreneurs uh, as they're listening for this? Yeah, I think that I get my encouragement from my children. I'm their biggest fan, but they're my biggest cheerleader. Mm -hmm. And it's them that drive me into wanting to be the best. Because I believe that what I'm showing them is the how that they need in order to get from where they are to where they want to be. And if I were to encourage someone else who was an entrepreneur, how do you get that sort of you know, cheer squad around you. Yeah. You can look to what you already have. I believe everybody is given a measure of something, mm. right? And that is whether it's your family or whether it's your coworkers or it's your partner in business. I spent a lot of time at the Entrepreneur Center as well, mm. just pouring into other people, but you can't pour from an empty cup, mm. right? So yeah. I have to be poured back into. So it's the people who are coming in contact with me every day who are saying, keep it going because I need what you're doing. And I found out that I could heal people with flour, butter, sugar, and eggs. This was something that was gonna take them back to a time and place where they felt seen. Yeah. And so because I'm giving them something that they feel seen, mm -hmm. that someone has made from scratch and with love, yeah. it causes them to wanna come back and bring that same energy back to me. So you mentioned that this was a game changer for you. So we have entrepreneurs watching right now and wondering, how can I start my business in a very unique way? What would you have to advise? Yeah, I would say don't follow the crowd. Mm. The world is waiting to see whatever you have to offer. And I think following my gut and doing what people were asking from me. Mm. This was the idea of a customer of mine no who was way. fresh back home from California. Uh -huh. She said, there's this thing that they're doing in LA and New York, and I think you need to do it in Nashville. Wow. And I was always listening. So the art mm. of listening has really helped to shape my business. Yes. I didn't have to use my big eight windows for yeah. market research anymore. Now. I could use my cupcake truck and bring the cupcakes to where they were. When I started seeing that people were lining up for miles in order to get cupcakes, no I way. started knowing exactly where I needed to place really? locations. All right, so how did you learn the skills to run a cupcake business with no formal background of any food baking and any tips that you would drop to our entrepreneurs that are starting this business? Yeah, I would say that I learned from the School of Hard Knocks. Uh, <laughs> I did a lot of talking back and forth with my grandmother, uh, who was a really amazing baker. And she gave me the things that she knew without a recipe. And it was taking cues from the things that I had in the past uh -huh. to inform me about the future and how I was going to use that now. Wow. So I applied my science background to okay. what my grandmother was doing in the kitchen to uh -huh. create a recipe for success. So the tip that you're recommending is go talk to your grandma. <laughs> <laughs> to obey your elders. There you go, I love it. <laughs> All right, so what kind of a mindset do you need to have to start any business? 
when I first had the idea to open up the cupcake collection, there were no cupcake shops in Nashville. Mm. But I told you it took me two years working like it was a business every day before my shop even opened because I didn't have money, I didn't have credit, I didn't have experience in the business, I didn't have any knowledge, right? Yeah. yeah. And I was losing the home that I was living in. Mm -hmm. So what would make me believe that I should now come with my lack of knowledge, yeah. my lack of experience, and open up a cupcake place? I believe it's because I had something different to offer the world. And now as you look around the cupcake collection, is the last man standing. Yeah, and I, and I love that because your location is not like prime downtown Nashville where you're surrounded by a bunch of businesses. You're kind of in the residential part too and, yeah. and your business is thriving. So that's kudos to you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. It's funny because my neighbors thought I was crazy. <laughs> and as I walked over to talk to one of my neighbors who had just moved back into her house, she was laughing with me saying, what did I even know? She said, because we would talk about you and say, this is never gonna work. So they would pop by, stick money in the tip jar, help oh, the poor girl man. out. <laughs> that is so cool. Little did they know wow. it was all working out for my good. Well, this seems like a really cool place. Once again, here in Nashville, Tennessee, tell us, where are we at? You're at the National Entrepreneur Center, and our dream was to be the best place in America for you to start and grow a business. Mm -hmm. And I believe that this is what we're accomplishing here. Yeah. And I'm saying we, not because I like to speak French, which I do, <laughs> but because I get to be a part of the board and what they're doing in the community. Yeah. So not just that I've learned from this place, but also I get to teach in this place wow. as well. Wow, so cool. Well, let's yeah. go inside and check it yeah, out. Yeah, I would love to show you around. Yeah, thank you. All right, so you have taken a lot of risk in your business to get to the point where you're at now. So tell me, which risks that you applied in your life that were maybe not so much worth it and those were that were definitely worth it? And also, were there any that risks that did not work out for you? Yeah, I think I'm too silly to know which was which. I just was <laughs> always willing to jump. I'm oh, the nice. kind of leader that flies by the seat of my pants, and I yeah. believe that there was always room for growth. So if there was a thing that wasn't worth it, I think I just counted it up as a lesson that was learned, and that was the cost of the lesson. But I yeah. don't want to be learning the same lesson over and over again. Yeah. Does well, that make sense? It does. And since you've answered that, I, I love how how much wisdom you have. And it sounds like your mom has helped you so much. So, in mm -hmm. other words, I mean, you spend your devotionals every morning. So mm -hmm. that has that's empowering you as you wake up to kind of give you wisdom on and discern which mistakes to do or mistake, you know, yeah. things to avoid. So mm -hmm. I think I like that a lot. Yeah, I'm trying to follow my spirit into everything. There you go. <laughs> So earlier you have mentioned that you have one secret that has gotten you to this far. I want to know what it is. Please share with us. Yeah, I believe it's faith. I believe that your faith works like money. Hmm. And I believe that faith and money have the same characteristics or properties. But I believe that faith has a greater return on investment than money does. Wow. And so I believe, so like money, you can't get as much money out of the bank unless you deposit into it, right? Mm -hmm. Faith is the same way. It's according to your faith, it will be unto you. Yeah. So however you believe is what you will receive. Wow. And so I believe that when you operate in faith, when you O-W-N, mm -hmm. you're N-O-W, you will have W-O-N. Wow. And so a lot of people, when they're starting their businesses, they believe that they are afraid of failure. Mm. But I believe that we're afraid of success. Whoa. Because you would not start a business and get people rallied around a thing if you truly believed that it wasn't going to mm -hmm. work. Right. Yeah. But when you put all of your faith or your effort or your confidence mm -hmm. into a thing, you really do believe it's going to work or you wouldn't waste the time if failure was what you were really afraid of. Mm. And so the reason why I believe that success is the thing that most people fear mm -hmm. is because success requires something. Yeah. Success means I've got to get up every morning and I've got to show up to the table when I don't feel like it. Mm -hmm. When I'm tired or when I when all of my family is going on vacation, I've got to stay at work and do this thing that now people are lining up for. Yeah. Yeah. That's the success that makes you afraid. And so wow. that's what I want people to see. There's a mind shift that happens you're not afraid to fail yeah. you're afraid to succeed wow and i can tell how your faith has brought you to where you're at now yeah 
All right, so this is a pretty cool room. Where are we? Tell us. <laughs> We're in a classroom at the Entrepreneur Center. I told you earlier I got my degree from the School of Hard Knocks. Yeah. And this is where that classroom oh, was. Oh, really? Yeah. As you're learning stuff, now you're teaching other people to do the same. Mm -hmm. So there are viewers watching right now that are parents. And you as a mother have, have six children mm -hmm. and you started this business. How did you do that? with you know with your with my babies with your babies what? and how can you encourage those parents to watch I'm like hey you can do this too tell me <laughs> what i believe is that i took my experience as being their mother mm -hmm. and applied it to business. Mm. Business is a lot like a baby. When it's six months old, you're not gonna leave it with anybody. Mm. But by the time my business gets to be a teenager, I'm leaving it overnight <laughs> and saying, don't tear down the house, right? <laughs> there you and go. that's I the love same it. thing that we're experiencing now. I get to leave and walk away and I can trust the people who know what to do oh, not to tear down the house. So you were 31 when you started your business. So there's a lot of people right now that are thinking, I wanna start my business, but I'm in my 30s or even older. I mean, is that too late to start a business? I mean, what are your thoughts on that? I believe it's never too late to start. Mm. Start from where you are to get to where you wanna be. People are always thinking they've got to wait for some big amazing yeah. thing to happen in order for them to begin. Uh -huh. And I have learned that studies are showing that four out of 10 people that are starting businesses have already had children mm. and then those who start their businesses after their 30s and closer into their 40s are finding more success because they have more connections okay they know what the risks are that they're actually getting involved with and they have more experience in the business that they've chosen yeah so maybe while I thought it was the end for me uh -huh. it was only just the beginning because mm. I had learned a lot from the school of hard knocks I love it you guys, I hope you have enjoyed this episode as much as I have. And if you want to learn more about how to start your own business from scratch with very little money, be sure to watch our other video with Black Sunflower founder Jasmine Richard, who has scaled her candle business to a six-figure business all from nothing. So now it is time to the cupcake cheer. <laughs> <laughs>